I looked around and there was evidence of other puffballs having gone to poof, you know. So I thought, it's a puffball. So I called wow. Al. Check it out. I found a giant puffball. What should I do? Let's bring it home. <laughs> Cool. Has anybody ever seen a giant puffball up? I've never seen one in the Ely area before. I mean, I've seen them other places. Um, but. I had just talked to somebody, um, John Leonard, over who was having Neil over in one of the other rooms over here, and he's found some giant puffballs up his up, I guess up Echo Trail recently. I don't know if they were as big as this. He was saying, you know, large puffballs. So. Is that the actual name of it? Not scientific, but the regular giant, name? Giant puffball. That's a so. common, <laughs> common name for it, yeah. yeah. Like and, and of course, they're white when they're, no. they're edible, but, you know, this is a good one. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, real excited to be here. Uh, I've just been uh, thrust from a uh, my farm actually to a statewide level. I just got chosen as a senior fellow for the College of Agriculture Systems for the university. So I will be traveling around helping communities and colleges and teaching in colleges and about building local uh, food systems. So that's, uh, these slides are actually, the base of these slides are from a presentation I just gave to the land grant uh, colleges, so Purdue University, Nebraska University, all the land grant colleges of the Midwest were there, and we put forward uh, uh, a presentation on our research. How many were at the last E3 event? Okay, just two of you, three of you. Okay, a little bit will be review for those of you. Uh, but then I go on and carry on uh, to try and create a vision of what a local food system might mean, what it might look like, uh, what a diet might look like, also what's the economic impact. And I just finished that uh, data collection uh, and compilation two nights ago to get a kind of a, a better number on our economic look at. So uh, this is instead of supersize it, like that movie, it's localize it. Um, the North Shore, as you know, uh, presents uh, challenges. Uh, just being in the North Woods here provides uh, various challenges. Everything from our cold winters and long winters. Uh, sometimes even, I heard uh, today uh, the high record was 89 for Ely and the low was 37. One was one year and the next was the next year. So um, we have variable weather. Um, it's a beautiful area. We have natural resources that lend ourselves to certain size of farms. This is our farm. Uh, certain types of buildings, certain types of community structures that we can capitalize. They aren't necessarily the best soils. Uh, but there are other resources that we have a lot of water. Uh, it, it lends itself to smaller farms. This is our farm. You wouldn't see this on a uh, food ink type farm uh, where you have the uh, baby chicks taking a ride on our sheep. <laughs> uh, if one can see those guys, they're pretty cute. Um, so it lends itself to a different type of agriculture. Uh, the soils are generally, um, they're varied, uh, but they're generally shallow, generally uh, not the most fertile. Uh, the glaciers brought them down to southern Minnesota. Um, and actually when I gave this presentation to these land grant schools, and you have all the deans and all the colleges there, all the deans of the land grant schools, and uh, one Nebraska farmer says, now, we can't feed ourselves with overgrown gardens. <laughs> and so uh, we'll talk about some of those issues as we go through this. Uh, what exactly? And each area in the country has their own opportunities and own situations. Um, in this situation here, uh, our farm, uh, we built a CSA model. We started growing food. The first thing we grew, grew about three inches, and then it died. <laughs> and so it was very hard. Uh, Choi, uh, process and through a five-year process with the soils we were able to grow some good foods. Um, I also like all farms of $100,000 income or less which is our average farm in our area, $100,000 income or less 90% of that farmers household incomes comes from off the farm. And so most of, uh, over half the farms do not make any money at all. And that's 6,000 acre farms or six acre farms. So there's a real challenge with farming. So most farmers have other jobs. 
Uh, I do various things, solar install, buildings, a lighthouse keeper at Split Rock Lighthouse, so a whole collage of things. One of the things I started doing uh, a couple winters ago was like, I said to my wife, I said, what is the situation? Can we feed ourselves? And I started doing research, and she allowed me, the, afforded me the time to do that. What's kind of cool about that is then uh, a professor uh, uh, down at UMD, Stacy Stark, she came across this funding. She's like, I want a directory of farms. I want to do something on food. So she called Cree, who I think spoke to you all early in the summer, Cree Bradley. Um, and uh, Cree said, well, you got to talk to this guy, David. He's doing research on it already. And so we got together. And I presented my research to her, and she said, yeah, let's write a grant for that. So now you can get paid to do it. So it allowed uh, the expansion of a locally adapted food system. Uh, and we put it together uh, with a whole bunch of collaborators. But you can get an idea. This is the region we're looking at. Uh, it's uh, the northeast and northwest Wisconsin, northeast Minnesota region. Eight counties uh, in Minnesota and seven in Wisconsin. Um, it is a unique area and so we had a lot of different variables to look at. The research components are trying to do a kind of a holistic looking at uh, cultural and anthropological type approach along with part statistics which I mostly dealt with. And the first part was just getting an idea from the farmers. And so we had to get kind of a collage the different types of farmers in our area and also the different um, uh, types of philosophies, whether it's organic, certified or not, or conventional. And we went around to the farms and we asked them questions. What's going on on the farm? How are you making it? What are your obstacles? Whole bunch of questions. Uh, we had interviewers go and it was a two hour interview uh, on the farms where we would ask these questions and get kind of ground truthing. What is it like for these farmers throughout the area and what might be the prospects for growing a local food system? We try to get our, our feedback from everyone involved. Uh, and in this case, we even got some feedback from this turkey. <laughs> so in this process, we kind of got an idea culturally. In fact, through this process, we added an additional county in Wisconsin because Wisconsin said, no, culturally, this county belongs in this region. And so we added that also economically, Iron County over in, over in uh, Wisconsin. So it's good to have that kind of big picture. We also looked at the landscape. How much of our area can grow food? And frankly, um, you can see this purple area. That's an area that's not suitable for farming. That's where we live. So when everyone says, well, can you really grow the food on the farms, on the fields you've claimed you can grow? Our farm is the, you know, the template where, yes, you can because it can be done on even worse uh, areas. Two feet of soil to bedrock, uh, uh, very infertile soil. So we went through water, wetlands, developed land. We found what land was left, but then we took it a whole another layer. Stacy Stark did this with the GIS. She then identified all the lands that had above average soil types, but also that were not covered in trees. So we didn't want, you know, the forest service or foresters saying, well, now you're going to cut all the trees and grow food. No, we just took the land that was already cleared. And so then we only took up the cleared land that wasn't slope, wasn't developed, wasn't roads, wasn't other things um, that was above average in fertility. So our land that our, we grow on wouldn't even be anywhere near this map. So of that land, so it's a very conservative estimate, um, we have almost 1.7 million acres that is suitable, very suitable to grow our food right now here in our region. Um, we then had to look at population. We're just under 500,000 people. But what does this population eat? This we had to go to national standards. Of the standard American